raising awareness about the program. Come and visit us at SS Stadium. What we're trying to do is we're trying to establish what's commonplace here in Australia, that is to have a sporting opportunities for children, particularly youth, so that they become involved in a club environment, so that they can participate in sport uh, and enjoy sport, but also understand what are the requirements of sport, like having codes of behaviour, uh, fairness, respecting umpires, respecting the game, which is not commonplace over there. There was no opportunities for children to play sport after school. These people come with a love of their kids, they want to be involved in a program for the kids and they also have a love of soccer. So they come to the program to try and contribute and our, the aim of the Future and Youth program is a capacity building program. We're aiming to set this up and train people so eventually they have ownership of it and they run it themselves. We're dealing with the children who have nothing to do. We want to train leaders that will take over and run the program when we're not there. One of the aims of Future and Youth is to develop leadership with young people. So we have young people ranging from 16 to probably 30 that volunteer to be coaches and we run a soccer coaching program before we start the actual program with the children. And we give them all the skills and drills they need to be able to coach the kids in the soccer program. We're trying to ensure that the program is about codes of behaviour because the, the community in Bacow, it's a rather volatile community. We had, there is a lot of unemployed unemployment and particularly unemployed youth. There are disengaged youth and so the, the community is, is at times rather volatile and what we're trying to do is we're trying to get children to or youth to understand that there are codes of behaviour on field which can then be transferred off field into the community. So we're working very closely with the community who are partner partnering with us to uh, develop and implement this program. We're also having some impact within the community. We've had the coaches who are showing more confidence in terms of them taking responsibility for their own team. Uh, we obviously have a coach education program for, for the coaches but the, if the coaches come early with their children they then run warm-up activities which are obviously a, a duplication of what we've done in the previous days but the work that Paul and Sandy and now Beth McLeod have done uh, they then uh, copy that and so they run that. Uh, they're also showing far more confidence in terms of their ability to manage their children and so that they, we're showing that we are having an impact with the coaches. We don't teach them any skills because they're far more skilled than us. We're trying to teach them organisation and leadership so that they can teach their skills in an organised fashion. Our coaches are fantastic. They range from you know, 16 to 17 year old kids through to some mums. Like this year, this program, we had two mums come and run the program or be coaches and they were wonderful. We had probably 400 to 500 on each pitch each day that we ran the program. Very exciting, very hectic, very busy. And we take enough t-shirts, caps and water bottles for every single kid that's on the program. Now that's a lot of t-shirts, caps and water bottles, over a thousand. But we really like to make sure that they have those. And we also explain to them the messages on the caps and the water bottles and the t-shirts. On our t-shirts, or on their t-shirts, we have three words written in their local language, fun, fair and respect. And we're trying to get those three words to be their, almost our catch cry for the program. And so if anything untowards happen, one of our, our students will, will point to it and say, that's not fair, pointing to, to the fairness, or you've got to respect the umpire. Hundreds is probably six to 800 boots and we, have to work out sizes, make sure that they match. 
it's really exciting just getting them to try them on to see which ones fit. We have to be very organised so they don't just all rush in and grab them, but they really, really appreciate the fact that they've got some shoes or boots to wear when they're playing soccer. The grounds that we play on to are not very safe. There's rocks and it's uneven surfaces and that sort of thing. So some football boots is also wonderful if we're able to support the community by offering them some decent sporting equipment. When they turn up for the program, once they've been given the soccer boots, which we haven't been able to give them on our other programs, they wear the boots with pride. Sandy and Beth are giving the boots the, our first time lady coaches, which is a wonderful experience and it's important that Sandy and Beth have been so supportive of these ladies. And the kids just love the games. They really do love the games. And, and again, the coaches pick up on one game and they'll do that one game for the rest of the program, but that's okay. This year we had a selection process, a lot of applicants, it's, it's a community engagement activity, a lot of applicants. Our difficulty is we can only take maximum of eight. We're particularly keen to take females because it's a very male-oriented community. So our female students have a, have a dual role in terms of that they indicate to the girls in the community who are often reluctant to become involved that they actually can play at a level and show some wonderful skills but at the same time take a leadership role in organising, managing something like this which they don't often see in, in their own community. So the girls play a, a significant role. We try and select students from each state and we try and make sure that we have a gender spread of equal numbers. We are looking for students that are team players, that are enthusiastic, that we know will be able to mix well with the kids, to interact, to inspire and to motivate, but also to cope with the tough living conditions, the strains on hygiene and the strains on that sort of travel and work. Well, hopefully it's a win-win-win situation. It's a win for the university in the sense that the university is contributing to the, uh, the uh, the people who are, who are less privileged than we are, are certainly a win for our students. And thirdly, it's a win for the, the youth of East Timor. Oh, we're looking for, again, leadership. We're looking for team membership, if you like, being involved in a team, Make, making, giving ideas or making suggestions, which is really important. Most of the students that have done the program over the last three years really talk about their program as if it was a life-changing experience. They treasure the time they've had there. Most of them don't want to leave when the time comes to leave. And most of them really have had a changed view of their life and have been very happy to be able to contribute to other people's lives through this program. So we would like to be able to continue this work a lot of gear. Uh, through the continued support of the university and our, and our sponsors. Uh, and we hope that we can make a difference over there and eventually we make ourselves redundant. Self-perpetuating is the right word because we need the people to have ownership, we need the people to run it. We don't want to be giving them aid if you like and giving them freebies and they become dependent on those. We want them to be dependent on themselves. That's the most important part as far as we're concerned, that the coaches that we train can see that we have a thousand children at any one time. Now when we leave, we need someone to run the programs. Like in anything, in any society, you need leaders, and that's what we're hopefully training. It, it is a big commitment, but I think it also reflects the university's commitment to, through its mission, uh, that it, it, it wishes to assist those who are disadvantaged, those who are poor, and so East Timor is one of the poorest countries in the world. The university uh, supports us financially, uh, to a high, high degree. The Vice-Chancellor himself from his office has given us a significant amount of money for this project. So through the Vice-Chancellor, through the faculty, through the School of Exercise Science, uh, together with we have good support from the Catholic Education Office here in Melbourne uh, and then Toll. Uh, Toll provided us with support by taking all our equipment uh, to uh, East Timor. So th there is a lot of people who are working behind the scenes and the la lastly but certainly not least are our students. They, they come with a lot of enthusiasm uh, but they also on reflection the students really feel as though once they've been there they want to go back again. It's really for many of them they reflect on, on their experience. 
and they would like to go back and contribute more to that community. So it's a, it's a in some in some cases it's almost a life changing experience for them. Obrigado. Obrigado.